$80. That is the cost of the Beast Glove in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. This is a melee weapon that was part of Call of Duty's crossover event with Godzilla Cross Kong and the only way to get it was by purchasing all four bundles regarding the event. Now, you'd think that due to the price, the Beast Glove would have some sort of benefit. Not in a competitive sense, but it could maybe unlock new animations or something similar. But no, it's just a regular melee weapon that does regular things. It's $80 for an average, run-of-the-mill melee weapon. You could say that it's a reward for buying all other bundles, but that's a lot of money for essentially nothing. This might be an example of a pretty bad microtransaction, but there have been even more egregious examples. Microtransactions have been around for more than a decade in the gaming industry, and they usually range from indifferent to terrible. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the worst microtransactions in the gaming industry, and for your convenience, I've split them into five different categories. Let's check them out. This category is something that has unfortunately become fairly common in the video game industry and its occurrence inspired this video. While playing AEW Fight Forever, I noticed that the company's tag team champions at the time of the game's release were cut and sold separately as day one DLC. I talked about this particular practice in the video about the game itself, so let's look at some other games that similarly tried to cut content and sell it as DLC. Evolve is a great example of this. This is a 1v4 asymmetrical multiplayer game where one player acts as the monster and four other players try to coordinate to beat him. Before this game launched in 2015, it had a lot of hype and marketing behind it. When it did launch though, Evolve had very little content while being priced as highly as any other AAA game. What made this even worse was the fact that a big chunk of its content was hidden behind the paywall on day one. A new monster was only unlockable if you pre-ordered the game, while three extra hunters were sold for $25 as part of the game season pass. The game also sold a lot of skins on day one, which caused a lot of outrage back in 2015. But I feel like this sort of thing has become normalized in today's industry with games like Call of Duty or Fortnite selling skins for the cost of two or three indie games combined. Day 1 DLC has especially plagued games that feature a lot of different characters. Fighting games have definitely suffered from this. Street Fighter Cross Tekken was the first game to do this, with the game having 12 different characters on the disc the day the game released, but they were sold separately a few months afterwards. Today, it feels like every fighting or even wrestling game does this, with both Street Fighter 6 and Tekken 8, including playable characters as part of the season passes. Finally, we have Metal Gear Survive. Now, up to this point, we've had games mostly cutting out extra content that could be argued that it was not essential for the core intended experience. Konami went a different route with their Day 1 DLC and decided to charge $10 for every additional save file you created in the game. So if you want to create a new save file, that actually costs 10 real life dollars. Luckily, the game is so bad that people barely use their free save file, let alone any premium ones. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth also did something similar with its new game plus mode and this hurts even more as the game has been otherwise very well received by both fans and critics alike. Loot boxes aren't as prevalent now, but during the mid 2010s you could not find a multiplayer game without them. FIFA 09 made loot boxes mainstream with the release of Ultimate Team and over the course of the decade many games followed suit. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare was ruined by weapon variants that were a lot better than their base models being only available in packs, Overwatch had loot crates that were very controversial but now players want them back, Middle-earth Shadow of War had loot crates for a few months before removing them after fan backlash, and no, I have not forgotten about Star Wars Battlefront 2, but we will talk about it in just a bit. Loot boxes have fallen out of favor in recent years in favor of the Battle Pass system introduced by Fortnite, but they are still a staple of nearly every sports game that has online matchmaking. The pay to avoid grind microtransactions, or time savers, are probably my least favorite type of microtransaction. I'm definitely not the first person to say this, but this type of microtransaction has you essentially paying to not play the game. The first time I encountered time savers was in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Now, being Greek myself and the game being set in ancient Greece, Assassin's Creed Odyssey had all the makings of a game that I would heavily enjoy, but they had to ruin it. In between missions, Odyssey forced you to grind for sometimes hours on end in order to reach a high enough level to attempt the next main mission. However, you could just buy XP boosters that would significantly reduce the time you need to spend grinding. This definitely ruined Odyssey for me as after a certain point, the game became a complete slog to play through. And unfortunately, this is not the only example of this practice. The NBA 2K franchise has done this for years in the My Career mode. When you make a player in NBA 2K, your starting rating is 60. 
In order to raise that rating, you have two choices. Either grind against the AI, or buy the upgrades with actual money. And these upgrades are not cheap either. It costs about $50 to get to 85 overall, and at least $20 to get to anything that's playable. From what I gather, it was Dead Space 3 that first introduced time-saving microtransactions in a single-player environment. As you probably know, Dead Space 3 is a survival horror game. A big part of these games is resource management, as you're in a constant struggle to have enough ammo or materials in order to survive each encounter. In Dead Space 3, you could use some materials found in its world to craft a variety of weapons, or you could just buy them with actual money. I'm not a fan of time savers in any game, but this is especially immersion breaking in a horror game. It's funny to me that Isaac Clark can be barely surviving the alien onslaught while being in hostile territory, only to bust out his credit card to buy some extra materials. This may be bad, but I've saved the best for last. Star Wars Battlefront 2 released in 2017 and fans were not happy. Pretty much all of the game's progression depended on star cards that you could only find in loot boxes and players could obviously skip that grind by purchasing them. Besides the star cards, a variety of characters could only be purchased by the game's currency that was not available for purchase called credits. Characters like Luke Skywalker or Darth Vader cost about 60,000 credits which is equal to about 20 to 30 hours of grinding. But here's the thing, while not directly purchasable, the loot crates that were purchasable contained credits that would obviously help alleviate the grind of unlocking some of the most important characters in the Star Wars franchise. All of this led to EA responding that the grind was part of providing players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. This is still Reddit's most downvoted post ever, with over 660,000 downvotes. EA shortly after removed all microtransactions and made all heroes immediately available. The unfortunate part is that the game itself is actually one of the best multiplayer shooters of its generation, and it's a shame that it had to launch in that state. Now, when you think of microtransactions, Capcom is definitely not the first company you think of. However, their recent microtransaction policies have been a bit strange. Dragon's Dogma 2 recently caused controversy with its microtransactions, but from my understanding, most of it were things you could unlock by playing the game for a few hours. Devil May Cry 5 allowed you to buy in-game currency that was really easy to get anyways, while the Resident Evil 4 remake had the option for weapon upgrade tickets to be purchased. Even Exo Primal has 53 pieces of DLC content you can buy. All of this is strange. It's like Capcom wants microtransactions, but is making a very half-hearted attempt of incorporating them into their games. I'm not even sure if this is a bad thing. Capcom is selling practically useless things that will more than likely not impact your experience if you choose not to purchase them. The final category of this video is just an assortment of stupid stuff you can buy in games with actual money. Starting off, I would be remiss not to mention horse armor. The ability to buy horse armor in Oblivion is the first example of a microtransaction in a game. It's obviously not the most egregious example of a microtransaction, but it still deserves a special mention. Moving on to more recent examples, Star Citizen is a game that has been in development for a long time. Despite the game having not been released yet, players can buy virtual land plots in the game for either 50 or a hundred dollars. This land does not exist yet and you cannot pick which land you want. This land claim costs almost as much as a new game, yet you can't even pick which part of the virtual land you want. From a game that hasn't been released to a game that has existed for a very long time, Solitaire was not what I was expecting to see when researching this video. Apparently in 2015, Microsoft introduced ads to Solitaire and the only way to get rid of them was by buying the Solitaire Premium subscription, which costs about $10 a year. From my understanding, this still exists almost a decade later and Solitaire having microtransactions was not a sentence I ever expected to say. And these were the worst microtransactions in gaming. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing as it helps out the channel immensely. See you in the next one.